Hey guys, Matthew here, and due to popular demand in this video, I'm going to be making a guide on my cold conversion uh, seismic trap build. So the reason I didn't make this as a leak start build guide is because I truly believe that the physical version is actually a superior build in a leak start scenario. It simply is cheaper to get started and it has both more damage and more survivability on the low end. It really is when we get into the medium budget that it starts to being a little bit more equal and when we get into the higher budget, the higher we go, the more the cold version is going to pull ahead. And the simple reason for that is because we have access to uh, better watcher's eye modifiers like penetrate, uh, penetration and stuff like that. We have access to a better aura. Basically, hatred is better than pride when it comes to damage, essentially. And uh, overall, it's just much easier to scale penetration on elemental than physical because elemental penetration can go infinitely into the negatives. However, physical penetration doesn't go past 0%. So once you've penetrated through the entirety of an enemy's uh, physical resistance, which is armor and stuff like that, right? Uh, you can't go below that. But actual elemental penetration can go to infinity. Uh, so that's kind of why it pulls ahead as, mo as the more you're willing to invest into it. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys an endgame encounter to kind of just showcase the damage and what the build looks like. And then we're going to hop into the POB. I'll have the point of reference of the damage and numbers for, for, uh, for survivability uh, on the fizz damage and then I'll showcase the cold damage and I'll talk I'll run you through the POV of essentially uh, the minimum budget into the more end game setup so what I'll do here I'll do, I'll do an incan, uh, incandescent invitation now incandescent invitation is the searing exarch and I will do the uber version of the searing exarch here uh, so we're also going to run it rare because why not so this is chill ground cannot inflict exposure chain and less recovery so this is a bit annoying because of the less recovery because of my I'm a, I'm a seismic trap which uses uh, Eldritch Battery, which means I'm using Energy Shield to use my Seismic Traps, uh, but I should be plenty fine to start off with that. Um, so we're going to we're gonna roll with that. Uh, I'm probably going to die a few times. As you can see, my life pool is extremely low. 2,600 available life is, is very, very minimal, uh, but it's good enough because we're going to be focusing on pure software playstyle, kill it before it kills you, and, uh, you know, take advantage of the fact that we have six portals. Now, after this, Again, we're going to hop into the POV portion of the video. Now, I don't care about this chill ground because my boots have cannot be chilled. Uh, so that's the only reason I'm able to do that. Alright, so we're basically going to use everything we have. Do as much damage as possible and then probably die. So that's okay. That's okay because we have six portals. We're going to use, utilize these portals. Now, the, the best way to worry about this phase here... Is to actually just die, uh, and and then just come back in and wait it out, um, because you you won't have to worry about uh, actually doing the mechanic. So this is this is softcore, uh, softcore in in its purest form, if you will. All right, so it looks like it's over. We're gonna head back in here. Basically, use everything we have to do as much damage as possible. And again, probably gonna do the same thing. Let herself die. And then get back in there, wait for the, the thing to end, and then we're going to finish off the boss. So as you can see, this is an uber version of Searing Exarch, and it is absolutely being melted. I've done 280, I believe, quantity on a feared invitation, all re release all bosses at once. I've done, like, pretty much everything in the game that requires you to have insane damage, and it's just not a problem uh, for this build, because our damage is just through the roof. Uh, and this is, uh, this is still not perfect. I still have the opportunity to just about double this damage if I was to, uh, to really just min-max the build. So we're nowhere near min-max, but we are definitely in a point where we are no longer uh, in a budget or even a high budget. This is over that, right? We've got Mage Blood and whatnot. Um, but anyways, let's go into the POB portion of the video now that you've seen sort of what it, lo it looks like in terms of the damage that it's able to, uh, to dish out. So... As a point of reference, we're going to look at my Seismic Starter build. And we're going to look at where I personally would recommend starting off as this budget, or as this build, which is around the 10 exalt budget. Uh, so looking at 10, 10 exalt budget here uh, with a 10 exalt budget tree, um, we will see that this build here, uh, the, let's see, so we're going to have to drop this because this is going to be wrong. Uh, but we'll see that essentially the budget budget version of physical, or the 10x budget version, sorry, 
of physical is dishing out somewhere around 9.4 million damage. Right now, looking at around the 25x budget, uh, now we're going to basically go back to the old orders that we had and the, I believe, double cluster setup at that level of investment. So let's go ahead and look at that. So around the 25 exalt budget, we are rocking, let's see, rocking 16 million damage, right? So yeah, around 16 million damage in order to cap out our resistances and for everything to look good. Uh, and this is, again, 25 exalt budget, just as a something to remind yourself of when we get into the actual uh, cold version. Now looking at the cold version for the minimum budget, which is around, I would say, 10 exalts to actually get this build uh, started. Uh, so these scepters, you would basically spam essences of woe until you get like crit multi or maybe a plus one physical or something like that. And then you would craft on trap throwing speed and these would be your budget weapons. Alternating scepter for the people who don't know what that is. This is a base that drops in heist. Uh, so that's that. Another thing is that we are going to be using Eldritch Battery on the tree on this version of the build, on the super budget setup, because we don't have Devouring Ditem because it's a fairly expensive item. Uh, so what changes from that is that we need to get Energy Shield on the build. Uh, so we get, it's very important that we get a hybrid base for our helmet, which is going to give us Energy Shield and Evasion so that we can still get Suppression. And it's very important that we get a Crystal Belt. Now, just a Crystal Belt and a Val Mask paired with the Skin of the Lord's 100% Global Defenses gives us roughly 458 Energy Shield. Uh, if you have items that look something like this, which is plenty. You really don't need any more than that. As you can see, my build here has 484, and that is just more than enough. Okay, now looking at the setup, though, in terms of damage, looking at the minimum budget setup, with the minimum budget gear, we are sitting at 8.6 million. So remember the 10x budget, which is roughly the 10x budget that we have here on the physical version was actually at 10 million damage. So at the 10 exalt mar uh, budget, the physical version actually pulls ahead of the, uh, the elemental version, uh, unless you want to sacrifice defenses for damage, such as dropping determination or grace for zealotry. But if you do that, you could also do that on the physical version. So I don't see any real advantages there. This build really starts to shine when you start putting more investment into it. So now looking at the medium budget, uh, we are now at 18 million. So now this is kind of where it starts to pull ahead. Remember the 25 exalt budget. This is around the 25 exalt budget. Looking at the items, these are multi-modded scepters, nothing crazy in terms of price. Uh, you know, Devouring Diadem, Skin of the Lords. Now, don't worry about the Mage Bane. It's absolutely not necessary. We are pathing to Mage Bane on the tree already uh, on this level of investment. Uh, so one thing that I get asked a lot is what are the keystones that are okay for skin of the lords and simply put You'll just have to look at POV uh, It's you know Basically what I would recommend doing is a look just mouse over the actual keystone on your POV And if it says something really bad, then it's probably not good. For example, this one doesn't say anything right hits the deal elemental remove uh, remove exposure to those elements and inflict exposure to other elements Doesn't say anything about anything. So that's fine Right? We could actually even take advantage of Elemental Equilibrium by using Storm Brand on the build, as long as we have no added Elemental Code or Fire anywhere, flat damage, uh, because this would apply basically Lightning uh, Exposure, which would give us minus 25% to Fire and Cold, which is what this build is all about. But let's say we look at Elemental Overload and it says minus 72% damage, or let's say we look at Resolute Technique and it says minus 80% damage, yeah, that's probably bad. Right, same thing with Avatar Fire, not great there. Uh, or Ancestral Bond, that's uh, Ancestral Bond is actually fine actually, uh, because it says you can't deal damage your, with skills yourself, but because we are a trap build, we don't deal damage, the traps deal damage, therefore Ancestral Bond is actually fine. Uh, but yeah, really, you just have to mouse over the keystone and see what it says. And if you're not sure, then you can come over and ask me about those specific keystones. But if it says something really bad on the on the on the node, then probably not good. But on the medium budget, around the 25 exalt uh, mark is where we actually start to pull ahead of physical. Remember the physical version, even the high budget was around, I believe, 18 million. Now the medium budget for this is around the same amount of damage, and it's only going to get higher. Uh, now looking at the rest of the gear, it's very simple stuff. It's basically just going to be life, resistance, suppression. In our gloves, we need a conversion. Uh, very important because we're going to get conversion on the tree for the mastery, but you got to get the rest on the gloves. Uh, so that's that would be with the um, Eldritch Currency and with an Unveil. Um, the Boots, same thing, Life Resistance, whatever. Amulet is a plus two at this level of investment, which is relatively affordable, uh, honestly. 
Uh, then Circle of Guilds. Now we're going for some pretty budget ones, the ones with Mana Reservation, because we are not going to be utilizing a high level Enlighten. On the budget setup, all we will require is a level 2 Enlighten, and we are going to be just fine in terms of our mana. Uh, so that's why uh, the mid-budget is mid-budget. And, and then the rest is kind of just going to be uh, you know, same sort of thing that we had on physical. It's actually the same clusters. It's still physical clusters and it's still medium trap clusters. Now, looking at the high end budget is where things start to really, you know, tip in the favor of the uh, elemental version. As you can see, the high budget. Now, now we're actually talking about big investment. This is the level investment that I had uh, basically before I got my mage blood. Right, so once I got Mage Blood, I was able to push RF into the build, which is another like 42% damage and, and whatnot. But before that, this is the exact setup that I had pretty much. This is pretty much my gear. Uh, and this, at this point, something like that is probably around the 60 to 80 exalt budget. So we're starting to really push some pretty serious currency into the gear, but still we're not in the, you know, multiple mirror setup. And we are sitting at a, you know, 30 million DPS at that level of investment. We're doing over 2 million damage per average hit and an average hit is one little explosion of one seismic trap uh, so it is pretty nuts when you consider that every single one of these tiny little explosions do two million damage each crazy um but looking at the high end budget it's actually going to be pretty much the exact same thing as the medium budget except we are going to push more damage onto the items therefore they're going to be better so you know in, in this case uh, the scepters have crit multi on them they're still multi-modded uh, the Devouring Diadem has an, a Helmet Enchant. Now we are actually going to need Mage Bane on the Skin of the Lords. And this is one of the most expensive portion of the uh, the entire build, actually. Uh, because we are no longer going to path to Mage Bane. Now what this allows us to do, not pathing to Mage Bane, allows us to actually get another large cluster on the setup. And this adds a lot of cost to the build. So you could actually go with a medium budget setup, still path to Mage Bane, right? and not have to worry about getting Mage Bane on your Skin of the Lords. Now your damage is going to be something like 20% lower, but you're going to save a ton of currency. So this is the last up the upgrade that I would do in the high budget. I would focus first on everything else. That would be the, the final thing, adding the, the, extra, the extra large cluster. Uh, so the gloves are actually going to stay the same. The boots are going to stay the same. The amulet is going to stay roughly the same, except I believe it goes to plus two instead of plus one, or maybe it was already. Uh, but one thing that does change is the Circle of Guilt. Now, the Circle of Guilt are going to go with the two damage modifiers, but that does mean that we are going to need a level 4 in Lightning in this case. And another pretty big change is that we are going to go with the Impossible Escape Jewel. Now, the Impossible Escape Jewel is in order to get, uh, basically, the nodes next to Mage Bane to actually cap out our Spell Suppression without pathing to it. So remember what I said? This is the final upgrade that you'll be looking for. This is part of that final upgrade, because... If you don't have Mage Bane on your Skin of the Lords, you have to path to it in order to cap out your spell suppression. Therefore, you don't need to worry about that jewel, uh, the impossible escape, because you're already going to be pathing to these nodes anyways. Uh, so that's not necessary. But if you have Mage Bane on your Skin of the Lords, you're actually not going to be able to cap out your spell suppression unless you actually get this node over here for 10%. Uh, so that's sort of the big change here. Otherwise, everything else is mostly the same, except that we also need to get a Thread of Hope. In order to get that second cluster, we need to save more nodes, so we're going to go with the Thread of Hope. And this also means that we are need overall our items to be better. So if you look at the mid-budget versus the high-budget, the items are the same in terms of like the, the, the belt and the gloves and the decision buys and all that, except the high-budget has more resistances on the item in order to cap out because, uh, unfortunately, the Thread of Hope gives us minus 12% to all resistance, so we have to make up for that somewhere. Um, and that's kind, of, that's kind of the only real big difference there. And that's pretty much for, uh, that's pretty much the cold version of seismic in a nutshell. Now this is sitting pretty at 30 million damage. Now if you wanted to really push the build to the absolute maximum, I'll showcase what my build looks like right now. And this is when you're actually getting to the point where you're you're not min max again. Like I said, I could just about double this damage if I if I was to get mirror tier gear across the board and like perfect items. Uh, but my damage right now is 87 million, so I'm triple that that you just looked at. And the big reason for that is because I decided that on this level of budget, because we have 83 max resistance due to using Lightning uh, Brass Dome, uh, and this is only possible when you have a Mage Blood because you can cap out your, uh, your spell suppression via the Quartz Flask. If you don't have Mage Blood, you basically can't do this setup. So it's a very, very expensive setup, but it's a much better one. 
What this allows us to do with when we have so much resistances and so much armor, 56,000 armor due to Brass Dome, um, and of course Determination, we can actually drop Grace. And this is what I did. You can see that my evasion here is only 1,000 because I do not get Grace on my tree, or sorry, on my build. Instead, I went with more damage and I went with Zealotry. And what Zealotry allows you to do is get really, really good Watcher's Eye modifiers. Uh, because this build doesn't really benefit from any Watcher's Eye modifiers uh, from Hatred. We don't need the crit because we're brittle, which means we easily cap out our crit. We don't need um, we don't need any uh, of the uh, penetration, really, uh, from Hatred. Because again, we are actually converting to Fire with Cold to Fire in our links. Uh, on the, uh, actually, pretty much anywhere from the mid-budget and up. The only thing is the low budget, I would say I, I wouldn't go Cold to Fire. Uh, because you, you might actually have issues with the amount of brittle that you're getting, but as soon as you get to medium budget, cold to fire is really, really good. Uh, and uh, this is going to allow us to get Scorch. Now, Scorch is basically a reduce of all enemy, enemy elemental resistances, so it's basically like penetration. So having that cold to fire is not only, let's see, 21% more damage, it is also 30% Scorch, which is 30% penetration, which is insane. But what that means, however, is that uh, when you get, say, a Watcher's Eye with damage penetrates 14% cold resistances, this is only getting half or even less than half of its value because less than half of your damage is actually cold. But what's really good is the Zealotry mods, for example, Critical Strike penetrate 8% uh, elemental resistances uh, because this is actually going to affect both the cold and the fire. Uh, and also, you could even get increased damage while on Consecrated Ground for, I believe, an extra 10% increased damage. Um, I could also get much better weapons. My weapons don't have hatred effect, which is from the Redeemer uh, influence, and that's, I think, something like 10 or 15% damage per weapon. It's insane how much damage uh, hatred or effect gives you on this build. Uh, otherwise, I could get a plus 4 Brass Dome instead of plus 2, and I could overall just get you know a little bit better items across the board. Uh, so, but this, this is my current build right now. If I was to push this in the absolute maximum, this number would actually look something like 140 to 150 million DPS with well over 10 million damage per hit of my seismic. But at that point, we're talking about, you know, multiple mirrors invested in the build, uh, probably somewhere around the five-ish mirror mark, depending, of course, on the price of Maze Blood, on the price of the Scepters, and so on. Uh, but yes, quite a bit of currency invested at that level of investment. But that's pretty much it for my guide on Cold Seismic. Now, hopefully... Uh, this was in, informative, and uh, basically, people who actually go through with it are going to enjoy it. Again, I still, re I still definitely recommend if you're on a budget setup, starting off the league, whatever, play the physical version. It is more than good enough. I downed the feared. My first feared kill this league was on the physical version. My first Maven carries was on the physical version. It can do everything in the game. It's just when you really want to start pumping crazy damage numbers, you'll probably want to convert to the cold version of the build. Before I go, as always, I do want to say a massive thank you to my supporters. So, Jaden and Rocky, Max, Miss, HKMZ, Thomas, Mass, Mercury, Solomon, Alex, uh, the Great Master, Nick, uh, Nick, Tim, and Alex, and the other Alex as well, as Nailed, Talismar, Andro Drago, 99, Vape, and Vincent, as well as, of course, anyone else who has supported me in the past, anyone else who resists to remain anonymous. Hopefully, your guys' league start has been going absolutely fantastic, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.